Hey world, this is your girl, Dr. MV, and you have just tuned in to Singles Get Real on WGSN DB online radio going solo after dark people. Okay, so tonight our show topic is simply called the Bay Movement. <laughs> That's right. The Bay Movement, B-A-E, Bay. Hey, Bay. That's my Bay. Oh, hey, Bay. Hey, Bay. You know, googly eyes and hearts. Hey, Bay, that endearing term that's just been, it's been going around the world. Everybody is somebody's Bay. Hey, Bay, Bay. <laughs> so we're going to talk about that tonight. Uh, it's April the 14th, 2016, people, and you have just tuned in uh, to the Thursday night Singles Get Real show, and we're going to have a conversation tonight. I want to just kind of expound on on the Bay. What is Bay, and how is it even relevant in relationships? I mean, it's like everything is just picking up as a fad and it's like, is it really real or is it just something that's in style, right? So I did my research being that I, you know, I'm Dr. Vaughn and um, I looked up in the Urban Dictionary because it's B-A-E, you know, what does Bay mean? And Bay, according to the Urban Dictionary, and you can look it up for yourselves, people, um, it stands for before anyone else. Before anyone else, baby, before anyone else is you. <laughs> before anyone else, you come before anyone else, right? That's what Bay stands for. And the Danish word, and I thought this was just hilarious, people. The Danish word for Bay stands for poop. <laughs> what? It literally stands for poop, people. You mean to tell me that this endearing term stands for poop in another language? Absolutely. My goodness. You got to understand what you're saying to people and how you're using it. But on the flip side of the coin, we, let's flip the coin, people. Um, it is another endearing term and it's short for baby, um, babe. So it is and can be used as an endearing term. I was on Instagram and I do have an Instagram, Dr. Envy underscore CEO, follow me. But there was another page uh, at Tia Pew Talks, that's T-I-A-P-U-G-H Talks, and she had bay requirements that I really, really love, and I want to share with you guys because tonight's topic is bay. So her bay requirements, she says, first of all, in order to be even considered my bay, okay, in order for me to even consider calling you my bay, the first thing that this person has to align him or herself up with is that they have to love God with me. So if you're going to be my bae, you got to love God with me. I'm a spiritual woman. You have to be a spiritual man. You know, you have to be in alignment with me. If you're not in alignment with me, how can you be considered my bae? How can we walk together unless we agree, right? You can't try to make something work from the beginning just because of, of other things that you like and bypass the red flags. We, we got to pay attention, people. The second thing she said, for Bay requirements is that you have to live for God with me. Notice that. First, she said, you got to love God with me. Then she says, you have to live for God with me. That means that our relationship is an intentional connection. We're not just going out to the movies, just winking it. You're not bored. I'm bored. You hit me up. I'm hitting you up. And we're just going to, you know, give each, give each other some company because we're lonely. Um, we don't know how to be by ourselves in our alone time and grow and love on ourselves. And so because we don't know how to do that, we're clingy to one another. And we just need to be together all the time. Despite the red flags, we're not even paying attention. So she's saying, listen, you got to love God with me and you actually have to live for God with me. Then she goes on to say, take it a little bit further. You have to pray with me. Yeah, it's one thing to say, yeah, I prayed today, you know, on my own. And that's great. We all need our own personal prayer life, our own private, you know, our prayer language with God. But at the end of the day, if we're trying to become one eventually and we're dating, and we're trying to get to the point of becoming one. Let's pray together. A couple who pray together will stay together. Don't play with me. Pray with me. Boom. There you go. She also talks about, she says, and then on top of that, you have to be celibate with me. What? 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 
Dr. Envy, what does she say? Yes, she says you have to be celibate with me. Remember, the, this show is about singles get real. And I really want to hone in on singles who are trying to do something different. Singles who are not so sold on mainstream ideas and media images and, and what the TV tells us and what movies demonstrate and show us through fake scripts. You, you're trying to do something different, which makes you an outcast by not having sex before you actually say I do. And what's wrong with that? I feel like, you know, in society, we make it seem like keeping your legs closed is Ill- is illegal. Like you should be locked up because you haven't had sex or because you choose not to have sex. And then we want to blame people when they get pregnant out of wedlock. We want to blame people when they get STDs. We want to say, ugh, you're nasty. But at the end of the day, we want to also have our cake and in- 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 have it our way. You know, we can't, Listen, we got to stand for something is what I'm saying. Nobody is perfect. Like Oprah Winfrey says, when you know better, you do better. Well, at least you're supposed to do better. Now you're held accountable. So if you know that in the past in your relationships that you have engaged in some uh, in sexual intimacy and um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, I'm not talking just about full fornication. I'm talking about a full sex. I'm talking about you have been intimate sexually, you know. You've done some other things that's gone over the board of kissing. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. And you found that that has not worked on your, in your behalf, in your favor. Why would you continue to repeat that? It's like, why would you continue to repeat something that has not worked? So what she's saying here is that, can we do something different, bae? Can we do something different? Can we, can we date? Can we spend time with one another? Can you listen to me? Can you learn about my focus, my dreams, the things that make me inspired, the things that I desire to do with my life? I want to listen to you as well. I want to experience some things with you that I have never experienced before because oftentimes when you include sex in a relationship or if you always physically hot and bothered, we're going to be attracted to people, okay? In the relationship, you're physically attracted to one another. But that physical attraction should not trump the other side, the other components of the relationship. You know, there's other areas in a relationship that are never, that are rarely explored because sex is always trumping everything else. And it's like, once you start having sex, it's like everything else kind of just fades out. And that's why I really like her philosophy on the bay requirements and that prayer is essential if we're going to make this thing happen together. Okay. She also says that we need to serve. You can need to serve with me. To see, my thing is when you, if you really want to know how the person you choose to call Bay or in a relationship with, watch how they treat other people. When you go to the restaurant, watch how he or she responds to the waiter or the waitress, you know, if they're rude or if they're kind of short or if they're kind of just, you know, or if they're nice or if they're great tippers, etc. because that person is serving you. They're serving you and they signed up to serve you. So what she's saying is, can we serve together? Can we do something that is going to cost us our time? That's going to make someone else in the world happy. Can we do something together? Can you serve with me? Then she goes on to say, be honest with me. Listen, a relationship that doesn't have honesty is not going in the right path. I'm just going to tell you that right now. If you always finding yourself in a relationship with your bae and you have to double back and ask the person, you know, are you telling me the truth? Or, Or you feel an inclination in your gut that this is not the absolute truth or they're hiding some parts of the truth from you because some people will say, well, you know what? I didn't lie. You know, I didn't tell you everything, but I also didn't lie to you. Well, that is a lie. Anytime you choose not to fully communicate to the person that you're trying to become one with, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry, sir. But according to Dr. MB, that is a lie. She also goes on to say, this is her last requirement for the Bay requirements is that you need to grow with me. Grow with me. Listen, when we connected, it was a seed. But now that we have been planted in our relationship, we need to grow together intentionally. If you link up with somebody and they don't have any intention in growing, you need to just keep on moving because that's going to be a dead end for you. And we have to realize that not everyone is qualified to be considered bae as it relates to these requirements. Now, if I go back to the Danish word poop, 
<laughs> and that's what you're going to end up having is a poopy relationship. Because if these components are not integrated in an intentional connection, the outcome of what you're trying to build is simply going to be poop. And that's just real talk, people. Hey, listen, you're listening to Singles Get Real with Dr. Envy. I'm about to uh, go to a quick commercial break. And when I come back, we're going to talk about some questions that were sent to me. I'm going to answer some questions that were sent to me so we can kind of see what's going on with people. People have questions, you guys, and they, and they want to know. We all have questions. I know I, I still have questions as well. But I learned that life is a lesson. And if we all pay attention, maybe we can learn a little something from it. Be back soon, people. Check it out. Hello, everybody. This is Madam Coach Correa, Love and Pillow Talk, WGSN DP Radio Show. Join me every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern and learn about love relationships and how they relate to your soulmate. Hey world, welcome back to Singles Get Real with Dr. MV. This is the Thursday late night talk show on WGSN DB, going solo after dark people. Okay, so the topic tonight is called the Bay Movement. And this is the second half. And I want to address some questions that were sent to me. And I think it's it's necessary, people, that we talk about this this topic called Bay. It's the Bay movement. Everybody is Bay. That's my Bay. You my Bay. You know, hashtag Bay. You know, uh, <laughs> everything is Bay. And I'm not hating on Bay. What I'm saying is, if they're going to be your Bay, you need to make sure that they meet the requirements and pre qualifications to serve as someone on your side to represent you because your choice is a reflection of who you are. And many of our choices are not good, even mine included. I had to learn a lot of life lessons. That's why I wrote my book called Bride, called Becoming Royal in Daddy's Eyes, which you can purchase on my website at www.drmv.net. All right, so let's get to these questions, people. The first question from one of the listeners is If I love the Lord, And my bae is not there yet, but he coming to church a little bit. Should I wait for him to get to my level as far as being equally yoked or should I let him go? But I know God can change a man if I pray for him and fast on his behalf. Should I stay and wait for God to work on him? Ah, wow. Okay. You know, there's no right or wrong answer, um... To this question, I mean, every relationship is different and every relationship requires different ingredients. I will go back to what I mentioned in the first segment of the show when I was reviewing the Bay requirements. And one of them was that if this individual is willing to love God with you, live for God with you, pray with you, be celibate with you, serve with you, be honest about life with you and grow with you then I say that 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 person is worth the wait. Oftentimes, even biblically, you can look in the book of Genesis, going all the way back to the beginning where Adam and Eve, the first two human beings here, it's difficult for men to just be alone. It really, really is, ladies. And so oftentimes you will find that when men begin to turn their leaves for the, you know, change their leaf colors for the better, they need a good woman by their side because it's difficult for them to change on their own. Why? I really don't know. I'm not a man. I'm a woman. But I will say this, the world's The view on men is a little harsh than it is on women. Men are providers. They're workers. They like to earn their money and wages, etc. And it's just difficult for men to bypass a lot of peer pressure in the world when they're trying to turn their life around and become more spiritual and become more godly. We women tend to be more open to that. It really helps a man to have a woman by his side when he's making that transition. Listen, God even told Adam it's not good for man to be alone. So what did he do? He put him to sleep and boom, he woke up and there was Eve. (laughs) There we were, ladies. And he said, you're going to help him. And you guys are going to conquer the world together. You're going to cultivate and go do all these great things. So I will say this. If the man is intentionally trying to connect himself to God and be honest in the pursuit 
stick around. The last thing you want is to invest so much in an individual and then when times get rough, walk away. And then a year or two later, you see the outcome of what the seeds you planted and another woman reaping the benefit. <laughs> I mean, that's just real talk right there. That's the last thing you, you want to have. So I will say pray about it, but mainly if he's meeting the bay requirements, you want to stick with him. All right, next question. Should I trip if bay don't put the toilet seat down after he used the bathroom. <laughs> listen, hopefully your bae is your husband that you're referring to. But even if he isn't, listen, major, minor things, you have to learn to choose your battles. I mean, if bae, if his worst thing that he does is not put the toilet seat down, but he's he's getting brownie points in all other areas and making you super happy, let it go you know, let it go, let it go. And just say, listen, you know, hopefully one day he'll learn to put this toilet seat down or maybe leave him a cute little note on the toilet seat <laughs> and say, bae, I know you have a difficult time putting the toilet seat down. Smiley face. Can you please put it down? I love you. Kisses. Boom. Something like that. Something creative. But you know, at the end of the day, if that's all that he has an issue with and everything else is lining up, let it go. It's all good. All right. Next question. Another viewer says, how do you ask Bay to get tested before we get married without sounding offensive? Ooh, well, I mean, at the end of the day, people, if you're not a virgin, when you two uh, become married, I mean, I think that rightfully so. You should honor the future marriage and sex is a huge part of marriage. And if neither one of you are virgins and you've had other partners prior to meeting, whether if it sounds offensive or not, you care about your health and your well-being. So if that person loves you and they love themselves, then they'll get tested. I mean, they just will. They will get tested. Look at look at Magic Johnson. And I'm just saying, you know, he has HIV and had it for years. And his uh, wife, Cookie, she remained committed to the marriage. They uh, are spiritual people and she didn't leave him. She remained committed. I mean, there's some things that you have to take into consideration. But before you get married, I also believe you should also have premarital counseling because that's where you can lay that out in a, in a, in a environment where it doesn't seem threatening. Or, and my thing is if the person gets offended, then what are their hi- what are they hiding? Why would you get offended if I ask you, do you mind getting tested? You know what I mean? So that's another red flag to me. If you're if you're getting offended because I want to make sure you're clean and, and I'm willing to do it, what are you hiding? So that's already a red flag. So please ask the question um, if that's something that you're very concerned about. All right, next question. This says when I get a bay. How does my friendship with my male friends change, even if they are like brothers? Well, the the reality is that when you decide to include an individual in your life romantically, and you guys are uh, intentionally connecting, uh, your brother-like friends need to be aware of who this guy is in your life. I mean, there should not be any secrets as to who he is. He Otherwise, they're going to assume he's another brother. He's like them. And, you know... I, this is my personal opinion. I think it's difficult for men to just be friends with women um, because we were not created to just be a man's friend. We were created to be his wife, his woman. <laughs> I think friendship is a good, solid foundation, but and that's what you can build from. But ultimately, men are pursuers, and if they had it their way, they would not just be our friend, ladies. So I think that if this is a guy that you're interested in beyond brotherhood, you, your brother should be introduced to him. And uh, they should know where he stand in your life, um, which creates a clear difference from where they stand. All right. Last bay question. This uh, listener says, if my bay and I had been together for a few years and he drops out of school and I continue to excel, but he is stuck in this depressed state and getting ready to hit rock bottom, should I leave him or fight through his rough time with him and let him drag me through his depression? Is the answer different for a saved or unsaved man? Wow. Ooh, that was a heavy one. Oh, I got to breathe. Okay. Um, here's the thing. Um, 
there's no right or wrong answer. Again, uh, for this type of a situation, the reason why is that we're all we're all human, meaning that we all have the power to make our own decisions. And so if you're with an individual and he drops out and he is probably going through a season of depression, and you got to go back and think about the duration of your relationship. You got to be able to weigh out the pros and the cons. And if the pros outweigh the cons, why would you bail on them? You know, oftentimes in relationships and not just romantic relationships, friendships as well, we tend to kind of ghost people out of our lives. Things get hard. Ghost people mean that we tend to communicate less, less texting, less talking, less open communication. We kind of just become formal with them and kind of ghost them out. And people feel that. So I would say if you believe that this man is your husband in the future and you believe that what you have already established in the relationship is something worth holding on to, because at the end of the day, if you drop him now, you're going to have to start over with somebody. And I'm not saying starting over is a bad thing, but it can be a bad thing if you're leaving something that's good. It's just that there's something good right now is experiencing a hardship and it's temporary. Life is ups and downs. It's not no rainbows. And, you know, it's just, it's a matter of, are you willing to endure the fight together? And two is better than one. So I would say if the relationship is worth it to you and you believe that your time invested with this man is time that should not be wasted, stay with him, encourage him, pray for him, let him know that you're there for him. And the outcome, I believe, if you put prayer with it and you encourage him, that man will rise to the occasion. Look at President Barack Obama. Look at Michelle Obama. If it wasn't for Michelle, I'm just saying, she encouraged him. And look at him today. He's our president. (laughs) Hey, everyone, this is your girl, Dr. MV. And you have just listened to Singles Get Real with Dr. MV, which is hosted by WGSN DB online radio, going solo after dark people. I am so excited about what this show is going to continue to produce. Please continue to send me your questions. I enjoy reading them. You can email me your questions at drmvspeak.com at gmail.com. Go on solo after dark people every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Your girl people checking out. Peace.